Good morning and welcome to everyone. Thank you and welcome to an event that shows it truly is a new day at the United Nations. I thank you very much for being here. You should know that we had to get a bigger room to accommodate everyone here today, and that's a good problem. And that is one of the greatest signs of hope for the United Nations that we've seen since I've been here. The Declaration of Support for United Nations Reform began as a way to give momentum to Secretary General Guterres' efforts to bring greater efficiency, accountability, and transparency to the UN. We thought that having member states put their names on a document would help ensure that these goals don't remain just words, but become a part of the culture of the UN. The response that we've had has been nothing short of fantastic. 128 nations have signed on to the de declaration as of this morning, and we're still counting. That is a supermajority. I thank our co-hosts today, our friends from Canada, Germany, Indonesia, Japan, Jordan, Niger, Rwanda, Senegal, Slovakia, Thailand, the United Kingdom, and Uruguay. Most of all, I thank all of you. The fact that so many are committed to seeing the United Nations succeed is gratifying. It is a sign not only that change is desperately needed, but that it will be achieved. You are the reason change is coming to the UN. It is now my honor to introduce someone who is no stranger to change. Donald Trump has a businessman's eye for seeing potential, and he sees great potential, not just in this reform movement, but in the United Nations itself. He shares your commitment to creating a more effective advocate for peace, security, and human rights. We are deeply grateful he has taken the time to be with us today. Ladies and gentlemen, President Donald J. Trump. Well, thank you very much. Thank you. I actually saw great potential right across the street, to be honest with you, and it was only for the reason that the United Nations was here that that turned out to be such a successful project. So I want to thank you, Ambassador Haley, for your introduction and for your steadfast advocacy for American interests on the world stage. On behalf of the co-host countries, I would like to also thank Secretary General Guterres for — and you have been Fantastic. For joining us, and we affirm our commitment to the United Nations reform, and reform is what we're talking about. I applaud the Secretary General for laying out a vision to reform the United Nations so that it better serves the people we all represent. We support your efforts to look across the entire system and to find ways the United Nations can better and be better at development, management, peace, and security. The United Nations was founded on truly noble goals. These include affirming the dignity and worth of the human person and striving for international peace. The United Nations has helped advance toward these goals in so many ways, feeding the hungry, providing disaster relief, and empowering women and girls in many societies all across the world. Yet in recent years, the United Nations has not reached its full potential because of bureaucracy and mismanagement. While the United Nations, on a regular budget, has increased by 140 percent and its staff has more than doubled since 2000, we are not seeing the results in line with this investment. But I know that under the Secretary General, that's changing, and it's changing fast, and we've seen it. That's why we commend the Secretary General and his call for the United Nations to focus more on people and less on bureaucracy. We seek a United Nations that regains the trust of the people around the world. In order to achieve this, the United Nations must hold every level of management accountable protect whistleblowers, and focus on results rather than on process. To honor the people of our nations, we must ensure that no one and no member state shoulders a disproportionate share of the burden. 
and that's militarily or financially. We also ask that every peacekeeping mission have clearly defined goals and metrics for evaluating success. They deserve to see the value in the United Nations, and it is our job to show it to them. We encourage the Secretary General to fully use his authority to cut through the bureaucracy, reform outdated systems, and make firm decisions to advance the UN's core mission. Further, we encourage all member states to look at ways to take bold stands at the United Nations with an eye toward changing business as usual and not being beholden to ways of the past which were not working. Mr. Secretary General, the United States and the member states present today support this great reform vision. We pledge to be partners in your work, and I am confident that if we work together and champion truly bold reforms, the United Nations will emerge as a stronger, more effective, more just, and greater force for peace and harmony in the world. Thank you, Mr. Secretary General, and I look forward to advancing these shared goals in the years to come, and it is a great honor to be with you today. Thank you. I came to the United Nations about the same time as the Secretary General. He and I share a mission to find value in the UN. We share the goal of a better United Nations, not a cheaper UN or a more expensive UN, not a smaller one or a bigger one, a better United Nations, an organization with the trust and the capability to deliver on its mandate to promote peace, security, and human rights. Over the past eight months, he has been a partner and become a friend. His leadership brings us together today. Ladies and gentlemen, Secretary General Antonio Guterres. Mr. President, thank you very much for your engagement and your support. And I also thank Ambassador Haley for her leadership, her partnership, and her commitment. And I'm very grateful to all the leaders here today Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, someone recently asked what keeps me up at night. And my answer was simple, bureaucracy. Fragmented structures, Byzantine procedures, and endless red tape. Someone out to undermine the UN could not have come up with a better way to do it than by imposing some of the rules we have created ourselves. I even sometimes ask myself whether there was a conspiracy to make our rules exactly what they need to be for us not to be effective. But above all, let us never forget that we are here to serve, to serve the people, people suffering in poverty or exclusion, people victimized by conflict, people whose rights and dignity are being denied, but also people with ideas and dreams who need a helping hand. Reform is for them. But reform is all for the, uh, for the hardworking taxpayers who underwrite all the crucial work we do. And reform is for everyone serving under the UN flag, all of whom deserve the conditions to do their vital job. To serve the people we support and the people who support us, we must be nimble and effective, flexible and efficient. And we must do so keenly aware of our obligation to, leap up to, the value, to live up to the values of the United Nations Charter. Together, we are making progress on a broad and bold reform agenda to strengthen the United Nations. We have launched a game-changing strategy to end sexual exploitation and abuse. We have embarked on plans to achieve gender parity in the UN, to protect whistleblowers and strengthen counterterrorism structures. And we are reforming our peace and security architecture to ensure we are stronger in prevention, more agile in mediation, and more effective and cost-effective in peacekeeping operations. We are reforming our development system to become much more field-focused, well-coordinated, and accountable to better assist countries through the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development, our contribution to a fair globalization. 
and to underpin all these efforts, we are pursuing sweeping management reform to simplify procedures, to decentralize decisions with greater transparency, efficiency, and accountability. These efforts reinforce each other, and they are all grounded in overarching principles. We are a global organization. 90% of our personnel serve in the field. And we need to bring decisions making, decision making, making closer to the people we serve. Trust and empower managers, reform cumbersome and costly budgetary procedures, and eliminate duplicative structures. Mr. President, you, you often have said, and you repeat it today, that the UN has tremendous potential. All of us have the responsibility to make sure we live up to it. Our shared objective is a 21st century UN focused more on people, less on process. And as you rightly said, more on delivery, less on bureaucracy. We know that the true test of reform will not be measured in words in New York or world capitals. It will be measured through tangible results in the lives of the people we serve and the trust of those who support our work through their hard-earned resources. Value for money while advancing shared values, that is our common goal. And I thank you very much for your support for these vital efforts. Mr. President, many thanks. Thank you, Mr. President and Mr. Secretary General. Today is a great day, but it's the beginning of a process, not the end. There are 193 members of the United Nations. That means there are about 70 member states out there that have not yet signed the Declaration of Support for United Nations reform. Our mission leaving here today is to not be satisfied with less than a complete consensus on this reform agenda. We are always stronger when we speak with one voice, and the future of this institution is worth the extra mile. Our goal is to convince the delegations that have not yet signed the declaration to join the effort for a more efficient, accountable, and transparent UN. The United States believes we can make history by coming together as a true global community for reform. In the coming weeks and months, we will be considering the Secretary General's broader vision. This is an opportunity for all of us to seize this moment and ensure that the United Nations remains relevant. We must challenge traditional mindsets, inertia, and resistance to change. We will do this together. I hope we can count on your help. Thank you again, and let's make it a new day at the United Nations.